This is my home office in Marietta, California. And it still makes me giggle knowing that right here from California, I'm talking to you from all over the United States, Philadelphia and Boston and Florida and Las Vegas. It, it, still, it still makes me giggle. And then further from that, we have London and Copenhagen and Germany and just Ireland. I mean, it just really still trips me out knowing that I can reach out and touch you right now. <laughs> I'm calling this video, I'm going to bear all because I have some information that I feel that I need to share with everyone. This is not a sympathy video. This is a, I want you to learn from my mistake video. Um, since January, I have been treated for skin cancer and it's everywhere. And I have an extreme case of skin cancer because I grew up here in Southern California at the beach, Huntington Beach, Newport Beach, Santa Monica, Laguna Niguel, Seal Beach. I mean, that was what parents did in the 60s. Took your kids to the beach, eight o'clock, and we didn't leave till like 9.30 after the bonfire. I was a lifeguard. I spent a lot of time outside. And unfortunately, it's come back to bite me. Also, tanning salons contributed to a lot of my skin cancer. So this is the reason why I haven't been really working. I haven't matched any fights. I haven't been working with more than two fighters right now. And I'm getting back into the groove of where I'm gonna be able to work more. They had me tethered here to Marietta. I was getting um, radiation treatments twice a week for seven weeks and that didn't work out. It made me ill. It ruined my skin. And of course I was the 1% of the people that get these kind of side effects. Um, I hate to say it, but I became very depressed. Um, a woman like me having to um, go through what they're doing to me has been, been hard. Um, there's skin cancer on my face and they've been using liquid nitrogen to try to help that. So it's made me feel very ugly and which has led to my depression. I wasn't able to take my supplements or any of my vitamins and I couldn't um, swim in the pool because of infection, possible infection. So here we are almost into May and um, I'm getting it together. You know, so the irony is the pool trainer has skin cancer, the motivational trainer was very depressed but this is a teachable moment that I want to share with you this is not for sympathy this is please put sunscreen on your kids put sunscreen on yourself um, to everyone that works outside wicked tuna um, our guys that work on our all of our streets please wear sunscreen um, and the kids, it's, it's so important, especially when you're outside at the beach. You have to put it on numerous times, not just once for the day. So I'm not going to preach about that. But I do want to show you what I've been going through. And you would think that we would have better ways of treating skin cancer, but we don't. And so what they either have to do is radiation treatment or what's called a Mohs surgery where they go layer by layer and that surgery can take up to four hours. The doctor goes in and takes a layer out, takes it, puts it in the microscope. If there's no skin cancer left, he's done. 
but if there's more, he has to keep slicing in. And that's because it's a large area and they want to keep me from having too big of a scar. And then there's the excision root. Excision is where they just go in and basically cut it out. Um, I've had a couple of those done and um, they've come back. I have more skin cancer. To date, I've had 12 biopsies. If you don't know what a biopsy is, Google it. Um, and 10 have come back cancer. So, what you're seeing now is different spots where I've either had the biopsy done and I'm being treated or they've cut it out. I have almost 25 different areas. I have areas on my legs, all over my legs, all these circles are skin cancer. And according to the doctors, they are going to be treating me for the rest of the year trying to get rid of this. This is an area that I was having radiation on and it has completely destroyed the skin. So, we started out with Beverly Cooper Boxing Academy, and in the last four months, while I've been drowning in my, I feel so sorry for myself, <laughs> now we have Beverly Cooper Boxing Compound. You know, I ain't no punk. And I feel very weak sharing this with you. But I know I need to so that you know what's going on with me and what's going on with the business. Um, I'm not going to give up. I have had a lot, of, a lot of things happen to my body. I've had a nine-hour brain surgery where they basically melon balled part of my brain out because I had a bleed and gave me a prescription for a walker and a speech pathologist. Um, after seven days of being in the hospital, when I left, I was able to walk out of there. Don't remember the first couple days, but here I am. And my doctor had been in practice for 21 years and I'm the first person that he didn't shave their head because I told him that I was going to be in Playboy. <laughs> so they cut, cut the um, scalp and basically peeled it back. I've had this leg broken. I have two four-inch plates and six screws. So I'm not, I ain't no punk. This just really caught me and... and Feeling depressed about it um, is understandable, yes. But I started thinking about my brother and sisters at arms who come back here, less a limb, PTSD, and it's really made me shake myself out of this. And um, I feel like I keep delaying on my business. My father was diagnosed with cancer in October of 2013, and thank you for those of you who continue to ask after him. He's still with us. I put everything on hold because they said he had three to six months to live. I feel that I'm doing everything that I'm supposed to, and I'm still going to work hard at my boxing. So don't give up on me. I'm still here. Don't feel sorry for me. I just have a new story. Thank you for loving me and to, to everyone that has told me that I am part of this big family of boxing, I appreciate it. So much love and respect from California.